All right, so we're going to start and we're going to talk about responsive web design using AngularJS. Now, this is a very small part of responsive web design that I'm going to go over. And this is more about trying to address some of the issues that you have when you're building a responsive site. I'm not going to go into CSS media queries and, and a, a, lot of, a lot of that detail. This, this is more about what can you do from an AngularJS perspective that if you're trying to build a, a one-size-fits-all site that's going to change its appearance and that what can you do to make it fast, snappy, and eliminate a lot of, a lot of the issues that you have by trying to do that. So if you were looking for me to teach you about responsive web design, this is about all I'm going to tell you. It's an approach aimed at uh, crafting sites that basically give you the best viewing experience no matter what device you're on. So if you go to you, know, you go to the site, whether you go to it on a desktop, a tablet, or a, or a mobile, you're going to get the best experience for what you're using to view the site with. Um, and it, you know, it handles resizing, panning, whether you, f you change your orientation. You know, it's actually going to change your display sometimes. And this is right off of Wikipedia. So that's, that's about as far as I'm going to go with that. So how, do, how is it usually done? There's two different ways people have tried to tackle this problem. And the first one is, is what a lot of people will do is based on what the user agent is coming in, they're going to redirect you to a different sub directory. In the, they're either going to send you to like a desktop uh, tree or they're going to send you off to a mobile tree. And this is what Microsoft's MVC, they've actually built that into it so that you can actually say, I want to build a, a responsive, ready um, MVC app, and it'll generate both a desktop view and a mobile view for you whenever you create a view. The other way is, and, and the CSS media queries is the second way, and so what they're doing is, based on the screen size, they're going to, like less than 768, they're going to basically change the definitions of the CSS to hide and show different things. They may, um, and they also change the width of, of what your columns are. And, and actually, Bootstrap is probably one of the best examples of how things work in, in that regard. So um, let me uh, give you a real quick example on how that works. So I'm going to jump out of here real quick. And I'm going to go over here to Rata Stogi. So this, this is a little site that I had worked up a while back, but it's actually um, built with Bootstrap. And if you watch what happens as I start to move, you're going to start seeing things collapse and things drop down here when I get to a certain size. You'll notice that right about this point here, it goes from three, three rows across to one row up and down. And so everything is basically here. And if you notice, the menu disappeared. So if I pull it back out, you'll see that the menu will come back up, the, the navigation pane. So now you've got a drop-down menu type of thing here. So this is actually done all based on the width of the screen that's coming across as a viewport. Now the problem with this is that if you're on a mobile device that has, let's say, a, a size sm smaller than 768 pixels, you're still pulling down all the images and all the content for the desktop site, even though it's hidden in the background. So what happens when that mobile device tries to, uh, well, actually, yeah, I guess I should have, I'm right here. So what happens is that your, that mobile device bogs down trying to manipulate all that hidden hidden CSS or hidden um, web uh, stuff. Plus, you're, it looks like it's really slow because it's pulling down all these big images over, you know, over your 3G, 4G network. So that's not really a good solution. Um, and then with redirection, it's more of a maintenance um, nightmare fr from a developer perspective because every time you make a change on the desktop view, you've got to make a change on the, on the mobile view. And you got to keep things in sync. And if you don't, then all of a sudden you, when some, you'll get these weird bug reports. It works fine on the desktop, but when they do it on the mobile site, they're missing an, an address line or they're missing a, a notes field because the developer forgot to update the, sec, you know, the mobile view ver, or a tablet view. You know, that's one of the things that I didn't like about iPhone development is their solution for doing the, uh, to doing the different size screens was to build another 
resource file for each screen in the early days when they actually brought out the iPad and that, and they had the very first generation of uh, universal apps. You had, you had multiple different uh, screen sizes, so if you changed something on one that was for the iPhone, you, you had to make sure you went and did it for the iPad, otherwise that, that same data wouldn't show up and your application would, would bail on you. So we can actually use Angular to uh, help us solve these two problems. One is if we take and go down the CSS media query, then we can use AngularJS um, to actually um, hide that data so it never gets pulled down on your, on your smaller devices. Or we can actually use a service for the redirection and we can actually circumvent and redirect them automatically from the client. So the client can then figure it out instead of your app, your server side code happen to figure it out. Um, we can also use ngif and ng switch uh, to display their appropriate content. But the problem with like an ng switch or an ngif is then you get all this complicated code in your HTML. If mobile do this or ng switch mobile and, and stuff like that. So that isn't truly a really good way. So what we can do is we can build custom directives to handle whether we hide something because it's on a mobile device or a tablet uh, or show something, you know, because it's on desktop and, and kind of take the same tack that ng switch or ng ngf and ng switch does so that we don't ever render that content. So it'll go through, it comes down initially and if you use ng source so that it doesn't actually the browser doesn't see uh, a source for an image tag or, or something like that you can actually just basically it comes down with your HTML you remove all the HTML that's not supposed to be, be displayed and then only render what you need and only go to the server to get what you need for your display so I'm gonna kinda go through two different versions the first one is the redirect by using a service and we're gonna basically feed that in um, into um, into our route configuration so we're gonna we're gonna basically at, at the time we're actually set up our routing, we're going to basically determine are we a mobile device or a tablet, and then, we're, then we'll redirect everything appropriately. So let me switch over here to um, WebStorm. And so this, this is a start of a library that I have up on GitHub, and, and the link will be at the end of this, but it's basically called Angular Responsive, and it's a, it's a service and four directives. And the service basically is all the helper functions, like am I on a smart device? So, so in this case here, I look to see if it's a smart device. Is it an Android, an iPhone, a Blackberry, a Windows phone? And then that in combination with the screen size, is, I'm gonna come back, this is a mobile device, this is a tablet, or this is a desktop. Now one of the other things I could do is I could also feed in, right now the, the sizes are hard-coded, but I could, provide a, um, a block, and I, and I know this is probably hard to see, so let me make it much better for you guys to see here. Let's see here. Oh, come on. Screen resolution range? Yeah, sc screen resolution range. So the, hopefully you guys can all see that a little bit better. Or should I make it a little bit smaller? Okay. So we start off with a uh, provider and um, and the reason we're going to use a provider is because we're going to inject this into a config method and you can't inject a regular service into a config method you actually have to use the provider pattern so that it actually will get it because at the at the point uh, when the config runs your services are not going to actually be gelled up yet. They're not all going to be created and, and instantiated. So you use the provider, which what it does, if you get down here at the bottom, is it actually exposes a method called dollar sign $get. And so what happens, you say provider.get this, and it then at that point will return back your service. So um, we're going to use that, uh, and that's the main reason we're doing this is because we're going to inject this into the config section of where we define our routes. Um, so again, what I was saying here is we're, we have just a couple of very basic methods. Uh, is smart device, you know, and, and what we're doing is we're getting back the user agent from the browser, 
and then we're checking to see if it's iPhone, iPod, iPad, Silk, Android, Blackberry, Opera, and then we're going to return back true or false based on that. And then we're going to, uh, then we have a couple other methods here. Is mobile, is tablet, and is desktop. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check, is this a smart device? And then if that, if it is a smart device and the width is less than 768, then we're going to return back true, and that indicates it's a mobile device. Uh, if it's the width greater than 768 and it's a smart device, then we're going to say it's a tablet. Otherwise, we're going to just say if it's, if it's not a smart device, we're going to consider it to be a desktop. We don't care about the width. And so the, that way we can then use that in our, in our route config to do stuff. Now, and I'll get into the directives a little bit here when we look at the second project, which actually uses the directives to hide things. So let me go over here and I'll uh, pull up, uh, let's see, this is app two that we're going to play with. So this is a very, yeah, first of all, if you notice I have, um, uh, I, maybe I can make this bigger. He's not going to do it. Let me try this. What is it, control, mouse wheel? Yeah, he's, what? Nah, he's not going to go any bigger. Anyway, I have a desktop folder and a mobile folder. So here's desktop, and it has a partial one and partial two. And let's make this big again, too. I should change my. I hate this. Come on. So really, all I'm doing is desktop view one, and the other one says desktop view two. And then the mobile one says mobile view one. In mobile view too. So all we're going to do is I want to basically pull between two different views. And um, yeah, well, come on. This just doesn't want to work for me today. Here. And then. Here's actually the config method where we're actually injecting the responsive helper provider, which is what I just showed you before on the, on the, previ on the previous source code. Although it actually is defined as responsive helper up here, because we're using the provider pattern, it actually AngularJS adorns uppercase provider on the end of it. So you're going to get the provider. And then if you notice here, in the config method, we say dollar sign get, and that's actually going to give us back our instance of our service. And, and so we're going to default to device equals desktop. So we're going to say if, if it's not a mobile device, we're just always going to default to a desktop. But then what we're going to do is we're going to make a call to is mobile. And if it is, we'll change the device to mobile. So we're just, right now, we're just playing with, with uh, mobile versus desktop. And then the route, what we did is we just changed the template URL to device plus partial. So that, that's all we're doing on this. So this is a very simple way to say, OK, I'm going to go send this down this route, or I'm going to send it down that route based on the device. So let me go ahead, and I'll uh, bring up, um, let's see. And where is my web service here? Let's see. Oh, it's probably up here in app. Oh, well, I guess it's a grunt. Let me try grunt. Jim, I've got a question for you. Yeah. Would the route provider method only be used for single page applications, maybe? The guy's not working on those for on those single page applications. It won't be using something like route provider, or does it still use it for navigation? OK. Well, it's, is, it, is the route provider being used for? This is actually being used for a single page. You could actually use this for anything, but right now we're just using this to change where we pull the partials up. So when you do slash view one, instead of it doing the normal, you know, hard coded partial one, we're going to say, yeah, because it's a mobile device, go to mobile slash partial one and pull that. And I'll actually show you that when we, um, we get, uh, get the app up here, you'll see it. Okay, so I've got it running, so let me switch over here and we'll go to localhost. 
8,000. And we want to go to app two, so. So right now this is desktop one. And um, let me bring up the network and we'll refresh it here. You'll see what it's actually requiring, what it's requesting right now. Oh. I'm just going to go ahead and if you notice it, we're going to we're going to get our response. We're going to get our helper, and maybe I can actually make this big too. Now, yeah, there we go. Uh, he's not going to make it any bigger, but it's going to go through. It wasn't a mobile device, so it skipped over it, and we'll change it. But what I wanted to look at was the network here. If you notice that he actually got the partial one off of the desktop is where he went and got it. So now if I go back over here and let's go to sources and we'll bring up this and I'm going to emulate uh, well, a Samsung Galaxy S4 and if I refresh this what we should see when I do this is it's going to pull that view from mobile now is where it's pulling the view is the mobile view. So so based on based on that agent string he's, he's kicking through there and, and doing that. Um, now if I go to view 2 here so if you, if you notice, it doesn't, on our app, you're not seeing slash desktop slash view two or slash desktop slash view one. It's just slash view one or view two. So as far as the user sees, and when they set a breakpoint and you come back to this breakpoint, it's going to, and you come back to that breakpoint on a different thing, they're not going to have to resize their screen or anything because the web, because the client's going to say, oh, I'm going here, but it's a mobile device, so I need to mobile slash whatever. So, so it, it, this is just a you know a very simple way to kind of handle that. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at a couple of um, directives that are even they're just as simple, but but they use a uh, they use transclusion, and they actually use a transclusion. A, a transcusion function, <laughs> or did did I even go that far? Yeah. So so we actually use a, a function to basically either render the scope or don't render or render render the transcluded scope or not in the function. So let me hide this so we can kind of get to it. And and the first thing on this is that you'll notice that I'm not dealing with resizes. Our, the, the re, when I develop this, it's like when I come to that server or I hit that, I'm either on a mobile device or not. I'm not really switching from a mobile to, to another device. So what, I was like, I'm, I'm going to keep this as a simple example. But you could go in and put on, you could basically look for window on resize and handle that as well. You could go back through and re, redo it. But what we're going to do is I provide back a post link function. And at this point, Whenever the attribute AR mobile changes, we're going to basically remove the child element, destroy it, and set it undefined because we're going to clean up after ourselves. And then we're going to check and see is this a mobile device? And if it is, then we're going to create a new scope and then we're going to basically recreate that element using the transclude method, passing the child scope and the clone that is actually sent into here. And this is kind of, it's this is a little bit more advanced mojo from directives. Uh, chapter nine of the book, Mastering um, Web Application Development with AngularJS goes into this in really strong detail. And there's a, there's a chapter on the AngularJS directives book that goes into it. But the whole idea is we're holding off rendering the DOM until this point here on line 62. And if it is a mobile device, then we're going to go ahead and we're going to insert that DOM, that child DOM, back into, or you know, we're going to take that element and shove it back into, into it, compile it and shove it into, into the DOM so it'll be there. So at this point, because this is a, and I should show you that we're actually doing a, a transclude on our directive. So that means that everything that was in it is given to us as a, what they call a clone. And then we, we can either stick it in and display it like normal, or we can basically hold off and not display it. And this is the same thing that ng switch and ng if does. And then for, and the other two directives are pretty much exactly the same. 
um, a tablet, we're doing, this, we're doing the same thing. We're looking to see w when the attribute changes, which means the first time in the link we're going to get called. So we'll at least do this once. But w if we do have a child element, we'll get rid of it and we'll clean it up and then we're going to check to see, is this a tablet device? If it is, then let's go ahead and take, and take that clone, recompile it, and shove it back into the DOM. And, and then we're just going to stick it right after the element, which is what we're doing here. And then with desktop, we're saying, okay, if it's a desktop, do the same thing. So, I mean, this is really repetitive. But what we're doing is we're using a different directive instead of trying to, um, and we'll get to another one here where we're actually, it's a multi, so like I want it to be on tablets and mobile devices, then let's go ahead and do it. So I'm just trying to kind of keep it simple. And, I've, and I don't know if any of you guys have seen my, examples before, but I always do very, very simple stuff that shows it. You can build on this, make it more complex as you want. But this other one, just call, it's just uh, AR responsive. So this one here, you actually pass in an array of dev device types. And then what we're going to do is, we're gonna if this is a mobile, if you have mobile in that, that array of device types, the, we're actually passing in an object. If, the, if mobile is true, and, and it, we haven't shown the element, we'll basically call um, is mobile, and that, that'll set our flag. Uh, if tablet is true and we haven't shown the element yet, we'll check to see if it's a tablet, and if so, we'll set our flag. Otherwise, desktop, and then when we get down here, if we should show the element, then we basically shove it back into the DOM. And let me show you the uh, code for this. Uh, let me go to Apple and index here. So. And then I'll make it, see if I can do this nice and big. So you see here, um, this is basically going to be visible. Th this whole div here is only going to be visible on a mobile device, which is smart device, seven, less than 768 pixels wide. So what will happen is when this runs, this will actually be gone. It just is never going to show up. And, and we'll, we'll look at the, we can look at the HTML. On the tablet, um, if we're on a tablet, then this will, if we're not on a tablet, then this will be gone. It'll, all you'll get is just the, it'll just say data AR dash tablet. And it'll look like a, um, a comment. And then on the desktop, I just noticed I pulled that out of here, so let me put this back where it belongs. There we go. Um, desktop. And then the last one here is the responsive one where we're passing in a, um, an object to tell it uh, whether we want it displayed on uh, mobile or a tablet device. And in this case, we don't want it displayed on the desktop. So let me go ahead and I'll flip around. We'll go to. Um, App one, and we'll show this guy in action. So, so we get basically right now. It's it's a desktop device. So if I go in and I bring this up, and let's go ahead and we'll emulate this and we'll refresh it. Now I get two different things: uh, only shown on mobile device and tablet. So if I actually now change this to Let's put this as a Nexus 10. I'll emulate that, and then we'll refresh it. You'll notice that the other one, now the section that says only shown on, and I'm sorry, guys, you can't see this very well. It's, even though we actually have it, um, oh, well, once I did that, now it goes away. But it's, it's basically playing with it. And if you guys go out, on GitHub and pull this down. You can play with it all you want. Um, see, now it's going to go back to desktop devices. But again, it's so let's uh, also look at the uh, code here. So let me go over here to elements and get down here where we've actually got this. And now maybe I can make this bigger. No. But if you notice here, like AR, you see, 
the, the comment down here at the bottom, it's, it's very hard to see, but it says AR Mobile. So that div that I had for the mobile device, it just basically didn't get redrawn. Same thing with the tablet. And then with the desktop, we actually have something down here. And then the responsive, there's nothing. Because we transcluded it, what happens is until we actually update the DOM for that, for that transcluded piece of code, it just basically puts a marker in there for where your, where your directive was. And so, so in this case here, nothing's going to come down. We're only going to pull down the stuff for the desktop. And if we actually go over here and look at the network, and let me refresh this again, you'll notice that we pulled down um, two images here. Now, if we go back and I change this back to desktop, come on, let's reset that. You'll notice that now that only one image came down. So using the ng source inside that kept us from pulling down those images. Now, if I change those to source elements, we'd always pull down the images because as soon as the browser gets the HTML and parses it, he starts sending off calling stuff. So if we use like ng source, the browser doesn't know what to do with that, so it leaves it alone. And so that way, you're not running out to get uh, data images. So that's pretty much it for what I was going to show you around um, responsive. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Two questions. Okay. First, one, uh, first method, really simple and elegant. Do you not end up, though, with the same problem you would have with switching back and forth between the two sites where you really have to make sure that you keep your pages? Yes. So with the first, with the first one where we're changing the view, you do have the problem that you have with the redirect, which is you're still going to manage two different sets of partials, one for uh, mobile and the other one for desktop. And actually, it's as many sets of partials for that view, yeah. as many devices as you want to maintain. Because you may want to do, if you think about if you do an iOS app today, a universal one, not only do you have the, the 4G, or I mean the 4S image size, but you also have the 5S, the extended one, and then you've got the Retina, the Retina iPad, the iPad mini sizes. So you end up having to have seven or eight different sizes, you know, to make something look as good as possible. Right, but, you know, but they, so yeah, you do have a problem, but at least they're pretty much in the same, you know, you, you're not hard. And then the second one, it looks like that actually helps, using the directive, kind of helps solve it by putting everything in one page, even though it's a different job. Right. No, that, that actually, and that, that actually is what a lot of people are doing now. If you, a lot of the, you, a lot of people, and, and the big thing in, on, the web, on the front end side and the web design is let's use one piece of HTML for all your sites. Use CSS the way it was in it intended for. Use CSS media, media queries and change your CSS on the fly based on the device. So what, what you're really maintaining then at that point is your CSS changes based on the device. But you still have total control over what you're doing. You know, the width of your fields, how big your columns are and everything. So you can actually do a very nice thing. And the good thing about it is, is that on the fly, you're, not, you're only maintaining one partial for, for that site instead of two or three different partials. Any other questions? Yeah. So, so. So, so the comment is instead of executing this every time, your service basically does this once, stores it off. And then when you're in your code, let's say, or even in the, um, let's go back to the, uh, this here. At this point, instead of doing this, we already know what our type is the whole time. And that, and that would happen for all your NGF items. So we could go back over here. Let's say, I think this is the one. So we could do, we could say here, um, 
NG if, and then you could do. Um, yeah. And it, yeah, the reason I didn't do this is because when you get into so that what happens here now is there are all sorts of different combinations, right? Usually, at, and so you get into some of these where all I really want is mobile or all I really want is this to be visible on a tablet. And if I'm doing it, NGF this, NGF that, um, it, it just it's, becomes, it's, it clutters up this. You know, I always think it's more elegant if I can create a uh, directive that hides all that logic. But to me, I think your idea of instead of doing this all at once, maybe what we do is when the pro provider's called the first time, is we already come up with all this stuff and store it so that we cut down on the back end code, which is another way to do it. So it, it calculates it once, and then anytime they say is mobile or whatever, it's there. You know, it's more like accessing a, a, a property instead of a method. But again, there's, there's, there's 100 different ways to skin the cat. So his idea is it works just as good as what I'm doing. Yes? Right, so so the yeah so the other, so that comment is is only render what you need to show for the device so that's all server side instead of instead of client side it cuts down it, it basically also addresses the other thing um, whereas you're not basically sending down stuff you don't need um, and I'm trying well and I've I've been dealing with that a little bit too. Uh, now with like what I was talking about earlier on one of the things we're doing where we're actually the menu the, the menu options we're parsing that on the fly so the first time you hit that site and you log in your your menu takes a little while to display because it has to go through and parse it based on all your roles but then you only get what you have access to right and it's cached at that point and I think you could probably do the same thing on the server is you're going to uh, you're going to hit you're going to hit it one time right on the server to generate that on that view and if you cache that view at that point you can keep your your performance can stay high so that you're not generating it on the fly every time is, is where I've seen that because we tried to do that with some old ASP.NET applications that we had written and we always ran into problems with it um, because it mainly because ASP.NET destroys the page and you're redrawing it every time now uh, there's other ways to do it nowadays, but that's another good a good way of, of actually attacking the problem. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and, and like I said, this is just to get you guys into it, but. But but it's some other ideas that you guys you know you can you can actually use as a as a Kickstarter and and it seems like we've we we've got a lot of people here that have actually had to tackle this in one way or another. This right here um, would be really good. I'm just kind of thinking what I might use it for. If uh, if you have different versions of uh, the iPad, all the browsers work differently in certain ways. Um, so if you have basically a dynamic view selection based on which um, tablet you have, yeah. uh, or what their user uh, properties are, that would, uh, that would be really powerful there. Yeah, I know, because we, we ran into that. <laughs> How many different flavors of an iPad can they make? <laughs> but you're, you're right. I mean, well, and that's actually another good thing, is if, you're, if you get the user agent string, you could use this, and instead of using it for mobile or whatever, you could use it for it's Android, and so I want to take advantage of Android over over iPod or or, or iPad or Windows Mobile. 
So I mean, this you could use it for that way too, so that you can custom tailor the experience for the device. You know, so so that's a, that's another a good way to address it. We actually use this. The, I was using the uh, is smart device function just so I could figure out if it was an older Android device on our on our site, because it actually handled um, the language differently. So that was the first time I ever came up with the, you know, started working on the is smart. And this is actually based on detect mobile browsers, but it's a much cheaper way of doing it than what they did. Um, any other comments? Questions? All right, well, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to stop recording.